for Healthcare and Life Sciences at Argonaut Intro. We are very privileged to have you join us today for the uh, second session in our three-part healthcare uh, webcast series, Connecting and Maintaining Your Clinical Systems in an Enterprise Account Platform. Uh, this is a recording of uh, one of the sessions we had at our Solutions 21 uh, Hyperion EPM conference back in November. So again, this is a recording. So we will actually uh, go through the recording and at the end, we will have a Q&A session uh, to answer any questions at the end of the recording. Um, for this recording, we're gonna talk about operational excellence being the key to succeed at the healthcare organization in the world of healthcare, our clinical systems need to connect the downstream systems and the back end office to properly report, analyze, and manage critical data, especially during these tumultuous economic times. So with that, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, look at Delilah's recording and again, answer any questions at the end of the session. Thank you so much for attending this session. I'm really excited to spend the next few um, um, moments with you guys in the next few minutes, hopefully for the rest of this hour. And hopefully you'll find this uh, topic interesting and or relevant uh, for you and your organization. I wanted to start us out with a trivia and I would like to offer up my conference t-shirt. So um, anybody know what this movie is? is celebrating what international day is this movie celebrating? And as you can tell, I am from South Florida, therefore a Disney World uh, buff. So um, I'll give you guys a little more time to look at the picture and identify the movie. And if you identify the movie, you'll probably identify the international day that it celebrates throughout that session. So with that said, a little bit about me, as I mentioned, I am from South Florida. I've been in the healthcare industry for over 20 years. And um, in those 20 years, I found myself doing all kinds of things with regards to systems. I've done ERP implementations, analytic platforms, um, EMRs, process flow improvements, production support. I've been part of IT. And also my latest role is that of a healthcare business architect. And one of the roles that I really truly enjoyed in my professional career and has stayed with me is that of a director of decision support. And based on that role that I had in all the years that I worked is pretty much where this topic is born and why it's so close to mine um, and something that I truly, truly value. Um, and so today's agenda it's about connecting different systems, right? Connecting and maintaining clinical system is the first thing that we're gonna tackle. And the second half is going to extend that connectivity all the way out to your financial systems. But notice that you will see how um, we will be spending a lot more time with the connecting and maintaining the clinical system because that I think is the core and the foundation of getting us from a best business practices perspective. And then we're gonna close out with the Q&A and then hopefully we'll have some responses to the trivia. I don't know if you're seeing, I'm, I'm not seeing any uh, chat or Q&A, but we'll come back to the picture and just uh, hopefully you're not Googling it. Um, just challenge yourself, okay? Alrighty, so um, what we know about the healthcare industry is that operational excellence is key to succeed as a healthcare business. Um, we also know that a lot of our other organizations are now moving, right, to electronic health records and medical records. And that has been a very interesting journey. And um, with that, the proliferation of clinical vendors that are associated, you know, that you find in any given healthcare organization. And if we know that there are 16 vendors, right, on average, imagine the number of modules that are associated to those vendors. That then creates a, a plethora of data sources that need to be maintained, updated, and that then becomes a very interesting disjointed, con disjointed conundrum. If you as an organization want to monitor, review, and understand your information, and another piece of information um, 
in data and analytics is ranked as the number four top topic in challenges for healthcare businesses. And all of it, I would argue, stems from the fact that a lot of the data is disparate due to the nature of the different modules that you're using. And the organizations spend a lot of time trying to normalize the data, which leaves you with less time to analyze and or consume the data that is being given with throughout the organization. But more importantly, it does become error prone. So what I thought we would do today is that we would talk first about connecting and maintaining just the clinical systems portion of it. And the way that we're going to revisit this topic this year is by basically just honing in on what I usually like to refer to as one data set. And so if you just bear with me for a minute, if we just step all the way back and we just agnostically realize um, that if, you're, if we agnostically want to look at organizations and the systems that they run from the perspective of having different data sets, healthcare is not any different. And they are different places or reasons why changes are taking place within an organization. In the healthcare industry, right, I would argue that we have routine changes, right? You may have a new department, a new billing area in your clinical system, a new cost center, um, maybe a new legal entity. Maybe you have to do a new tax ID because now you can build differently from a Medicare perspective and probably capitalize on um, the revenue, right, and the gross charges that you're billing. Sometimes they're more transformational in nature. Maybe they are some acquisitions, joint ventures. We're still seeing uh, that M&A activity within healthcare organizations. And that in and of itself creates the need to either merge data sets or update them and keep up with them. But we know, right, that after you set it up and you have your um, all of that data cleansed, you still have to deal with the routine changes. That never goes away. You have to keep up with the data in order for the data to continue to be clean and reduce the number of exceptions that you may be dealing with, regardless of which system we're talking about. So with that said, let's just start, jump right into it. And let's talk about the, the use case that I wanted to challenge us with today, just to sort of walk through it today. I wanted to talk about just the, the, an email came through and somebody just said, we have a new provider. Um, when I was in your shoes, we happened to have hired a very prominent uh, surgeon in the, um, in, the, in the South Florida area. And I still remember being responsible for setting up the, um, the AMR system with the provider. And the day that he arrived, we had, we had not, we didn't even know that he was coming. We were scrambling, trying to create the bill area within Epic to try to figure out how do we map it. And if we are touching the bill area, there were other plethora of applications that needed to be updated. In front of you, what you're seeing are the different processes, and this is just a subset, right? That definitely shed light into there is a new set of information that needs to be updated for this provider. I would argue that the first thing that we would have known was from an HR perspective, somebody had to have sent the provider that we onboarded. We had to have sent him a contract and a contract had to be reviewed and he had to be set up in the system. And then he had to be set up as an employee. I would argue that if we would have had and seen the world from a higher perspective and looked at the provider as a, a data set that needs to be communicated and a workflow, that does cut across many applications, we would have found out that there was a provider that was going to be onboarded. And we also know, right, that if we have a provider that is an employee, he has a name, but I also have to go out there and run over to the credentialing software. And if he is a surgeon and I do have a hospital, I have to go out there and start getting all of the information and all of the paperwork needed in order for him to be credentialed and to be, be able to provide services at those hospitals. Not to mention the electronic medical record. Also, 
he's also not just a provider. He could be a referring physician, right? If he is an orthopedic surgeon, maybe he has to uh, do a, a, a refer the, the patient over to uh, physical therapy. So he's also, right, a referring physician. Um, we also know that a referring physician in, and the healthcare organizations now are becoming more and more complex. Some of them have subsets of research information. And if you are doing the research, then there is a software for that, right? And so you also have to set up that provider in that application as well. And if, he, if there is research and he's a provider and there is grants in the mix, maybe he's also a PI. And he has to be set up and initiated on the project's module or the grants module in order to be able to set up that information. And if he is revenue generating, which we know he will be, we need to be able to record and report his revenue in the proper, in the proper chart of account with the proper maybe accounting unit. So all of these processes have one thing in common, which is the provider use case. But yet, we never connect any of those systems. And we look at these, these applications in silos. We never try to figure out how can I be efficient? Are there critical paths? And more importantly, do I need to keep track of the other trail? Does this physician have a different uh, name or he likes to be referred differently on the EMR versus the actual patient versus the actual employee record in HR? So this is the question that I post in front of us, right? And I challenge us, right, um, to think about in the healthcare industry um, and identify master data sets that we can now pretty much create workflows associated to them and let the single master data set be the one driving and propagating across all of these different uh, processes. As you would imagine, that's a lot of what I do as a business architect, right? I look at business capabilities, I look for process modeling, hypothesis modeling to be able to derive efficiency. So if we are to look at a provider as a, as a master data set within the organization, what should I do? Um, what are the best business practices that I should be considering um, in order to start this journey? And what are the do's and don'ts, right? Um, I would argue that these are some of the topics that you may want to consider. You want to consider and implement a data governance strategy very, very early on as you're considering and creating a new master data management strategy. In the case of a provider, I would argue that maybe what we want to do is create a processes and try to understand and look at the upstream processes and identify which is the group that will actually be the first one to create the domino effect from a systems in an organizational perspective that will be the one to get us to, to let us know and give us a heads up and maybe create that relay race, right? They are some, co um, some of the systems, right, are critical paths to other, like it's in the case of um, credentialing with the EMR. Some other systems do not have, right, that critical path, and therefore, they can be processes that are happening parallel. But more importantly, they all most likely have a different functional group that is the one responsible for that specific system, application, or process flow. And therein lies the beauty of it. You will be able to create your policies and procedure will be able to have segregation of duties, what we usually consider from an accounting perspective. The beauty on all looking at this from a data set perspective is that you would now see it as a centralized repository. And by the way, that centralized repository is not limited to the way that you view or that you started that, that master data set. In fact, as the organization grows and if it's more complexity, you can continue to add other information to this master data set to be able to continue to, to keep the data governance and to continue to reinforce the centralized repository. The data will be accessible 
based on roles and responsibilities, and you will definitely be able to close the quality gap. Now, let me just give you the scenario, right? And so if, we, if we're looking at the world from a siloed world, what I'm proposing and the use case that I, that I have in front of you is just one, oh, usually what we call the wheel and spoke approach, right? Which is, let me set up a provider and let me create all of these different attributes. And each different attribute would be able to be segregated by security. And by the way, it could be, it could have visibility. It could also have reporting and it could also have an audit trail every time it gets changed. And we can create workflow rules that could create um, the critical path and the dependencies with other applications and or they can be segregated and not have some a critical, critical path dependency. So I'm just going to walk real quick through um, the use case, right? I would argue that. And this is some of the stuff that I had to do manually when I was a, the, the decision uh, director, decision support director, to be able to gather information and centralize it so that it can be consumed for the entire organization. The difference between when I used to do, when I was in your shoes and I had to create and go to the DBA and have to see it is that everything had to be created. And I am not a software designer. So clearly I didn't have all of the functionality that an out of the box application would have had. Today, we do have a solution for that. And that's where the inception of the use case comes into play. If we use the provider data set, I would argue that we can easily set up a provider ID, which will be the data set identifier. Right? That will probably be unique to this, to the application, to the master data set. And the rest will probably be different attributes associated to that provider ID that have different workflows and different securities associated to the given group that we're discussing. So as you can see, in the first two records, I added employee ID and employee name for HR. There will probably be additional information um, that I may wanna capture in there, but that would be a good way to create the information and be able to say that data will be the master data set and the employee ID and the employee name can be fed to the HR system. Um, and that way, I know that this data set is centralized and I'm maintaining it and I have the visibility for it. And then the information can then become an integration into the HR system. Um, the other use case that I was thinking about was the credentialing identifier. If I have a credentialing software, most likely I have a unique credentialing software identifier for this provider. And that would be a good way this application to capture it it would be a good place to have the national provider identify in the credential software, but all of it, I'm maintaining it here. And by the way, I don't know about you, but when I was in your shoes, I used to run into the issue that sometimes the physician's name was not laid out in the exact same way that the employee name was. Sometimes the physicians wanted a DMD, an MD, or maybe they had a master's and they wanted those, uh, you know, credentialings as part of their naming convention. And this is where you start being able to see the data set as different attributes. But more importantly, you'll be able to monitor it. You'll be able to report on it. You'll be able to have workflows on it. Now, remember what I said earlier on with regards to um, the average number of vendors in healthcare? Um, sometimes you can have more than one electronic medical record and therefore a different provider number in those EMRs. This would be another way to be able to normalize all of that information and have all of the information get started from the master data set and then propagate it down to other applications. I also mentioned in my use case, right, that if you're a researcher, you will have a software for that. And once again, you'll be able to set it up in here and then propagate that information into the research application and so on. The grant, if you're a, if you're a PI, then you'll probably have a, 
a specific PI number associated to it that the NIH would have given you. And notice that I, up to and including, right, I'm cutting across the entire organization, up to and including with the revenue, uh, right, the financials of it. We all know that if we have a doctor, we'll probably need to either figure out if we're going to create a billing area for them. And yet, this is another way to be able to set up the information, centralize it, and keep it in one place. And by the way, this data is not just right to be able to propagate to other applications. You'll be able to extract and report it. You'll be able to marry it, right? And more importantly, you'll be able to cleanse it if needed or review it. Other additional applications that I thought of, you know, that sometimes they're, they're peripheral to these processes could be decision support or even up to and including physician productivity. So, Imagine what it would be like if one data set is in one place that all of the functional folks have access to the information that they need, that they will know if information is pending because there's a workflow attached to it. They would be able to answer and or you'll be able to create uh, different, uh, different views for the powers that be so that they can see that maybe credentialing still has not received the information that they need in order for that doctor to do the surgery in that hospital. But it would be at your fingertips and you will be able to rely on that information. And more importantly, you'll be able to see it as soon as it's updated as well because the application has notifications. So we spend a lot of time talking about this use case Let's talk about a little bit about what the platform would look like, right? Um, and this is what this uh, visual is what I usually like to call the wheel and spoke approach, right? Um, notice that these are all the connected applications and these are all the applications that I discussed, right? Um, the HR, the um, ERP, the, electro the clinical system, the research applications. But uh, here at the top is where you have the enterprise information that is being updated by the functional folks and then being propagated that back down to the applications and or provide the visibility to the organization. Now, this is not just about maintaining the data set, right? Now that you have your cleanse data, now you can start reporting that data and being able to share that information with the entire organization. And by the way, this is just one use, use case for the healthcare, right? Um, I can extrapolate all the other different use cases that we can, we can think of that I would argue they're low hanging fruits where you'll be able to um, standardize the information and normalize it because we all know that once the data is cleansed and normalized, we will drastically reduce the manual processes and more importantly, you will drastically reduce the exceptions and you will no longer be reacting to exceptions. You will be proactive. So this is in a nutshell for the clinical applications and being able to marry them, right? And you're doing it in a virtual way through the master data sets. The applications are still gonna be capturing all of their transactions, but the, go the good news would be that the exceptions will be reduced drastically and now you have an audit trail for it. So going back to this best business practice, right? Connecting and maintaining the clinical system, right? On the left hand side, you're seeing your value, right? We have the ability to do a data alignment that I remember that there were times when, whenever I would create reports from a provider perspective, all the time I would get from certain groups, Delilah, I need the MPI of it and I have to go and figure out and how to do a lookup or go to credentialing and ask credentialing, hey, by the way, I don't have this information. What happened to it, right? Agility is another another value, right? If you already have your information and you're being proactive, you have the ability to export a, a file and or update your systems overnight and off to the races you go. If the credentialing happened, uh, you know, the, before you went home and now all of a sudden you updated the information, it can go into the EMR and now all of the billing that was not done for that provider can now go out because now that critical path has been completed. Um, and you go, 
your data will go from insight to action. Why? Because now you're not looking retroactively and trying to manage the exceptions. You actually looking at the information as it's happening. And you can even opt to including, I would argue, that you can update your integration points, even with your financial systems, because now you don't have to worry about the exceptions of it. And you maybe can up to and include and create journal entries on a daily basis to be able to have visibility for the organization and be able to be proactive with regards to the overall strategy of the organization. And not to mention, right, there is definitely value. And we all know that we can put a dollar right, a, a cost to eliminating duplicate maintenance across clinical systems. Let's not even talk about, right, the whole idea of how many emails are happening back and forth. The fact that you may have to, in today's world, send out many emails just to say, did you set this up? Did you set this up? Now, all of a sudden, it becomes a self-service task that you can log into the application and you no longer have to ask anybody. You'll be able to see what the status is. And by the way, did I mention there's a workflow for that? Absolutely. And you'll be able to create workflows up to and including escalations, just like what you're used to thinking about from an accounts payable perspective. And then there's the benefits, right? You will have a collaborative approach throughout the entire organization. Um, as I mentioned, it could be application specific, right? Because you'll be able to set up views that are specific for that group and they will be able to monitor and understand what's pending and be able to um, escalate um, whenever something has been, um, it's been in the queue for too long. Not to mention the fact, right, that I think from an accounting perspective, there's always the audit history. You always want to understand, wait a minute, what changed? When did it change? I was, I was unaware of this change. So that audit trail, I think, is also valuable for any organization. And by the way, any data set. So notice that I have a quote here, right? Businesses often have very disjointed master data across many different applications. And to address this problem, right, by centralizing, consolidating it, and organizing the master data set is critical to make all these applications function. But notice that the quote is not from somebody in the healthcare industry. And very purposely, I did not look for a healthcare industry because I think for too long in the healthcare industry, we've been telling ourselves a narrative that we are unique. And of course we are. I would argue that every industry is unique. But I also would argue that it's time for us to be able to start looking across other industries like manufacturing to see what they're doing and how they're doing it and whether it's working for them and try to take some of those business, business practices to help us either flatten the spend and or create different master data sets. Um, in a nutshell, right, hypothesizing new models to be able to derive value um, not just on the data, but on the visibility and the overall organization and move us from being reactive to proactive. So if that is how we connect the ecosystem of clinical system, I would argue that now if our data has been normalized. If we know the mapping of a provider and all of our bill areas are set up, and if, by the way, a bill area, right, can be mapped to an accounting unit and I can do that mapping there, that master data set, and I can propagate that over to an accounting system, then I, I would argue that we can theorize and visualize how all of this data that is already organized from a clinical perspective, right, because Make no mistake, right? Our clinical systems is one huge, large accounts receivable that is not integrated in our general ledger. It's in essence, right? It's a huge sub ledger and one that we don't have visibility to, one that revenue cycle management has visibility to, but not from a financial perspective. I would argue that we can, we can definitely challenge ourselves and visualize how this master data set idea can take us all the way into an enterprise accounting form. And for that, I want you to think about the clinical systems and the information 
being maintained down here and being set up in a timely fashion by the functional folks. And if all of that information is being propagated to different applications and hierarchies are being created to cater to all the different lines of businesses, operations, financial, regulatory, now we have the structure that we need from a reporting perspective. What we will be able to do now is creating that ingest the data and create a virtual ledger, regardless of which application it may be. But the, that virtual ledger is not a replica of the transactional application that you're, or the operational application that you're currently using from a clinical perspective or trials. No, it's a subset of that data that allows you to be able to look, create a journal entry in the virtual subledger, feed the information in all the way into a journal entry, and then ability to support decision making through real-time analytics, but also giving you the opportunity to do a drill back all the way down to the granular information that you loaded from, the subset information that you loaded from the legacy applications. Now, I would argue that we've heard this before, right? And at the nutshell, right, it's what we're thinking about here is enterprise accounting platform. The ability to connect non-core ERPs, right? The ability to have transactions recorded in there at a different level than that of the actual operational applications that are happening. That is going to standardize how the data is being consumed and more importantly, is going to map consistently to chart of account and give you the ability to do drill back. But did I mention that it is the function of folks that get to decide how that mapping is done? Because we know that is the function of folks that know the business rules, not the database administrator, not information management. At that point, database administrator, information management, they become the stewardship of the application to monitor and ensure that they are creating the roles, the views, but ultimately the users of the applications are your functional groups. Now, what does that sound like? I'm sure you've heard this before, a single source of truth that it will give you the ability, right, to improve efficiencies, create virtual subledgers, create the mapping, right? That to me, that is vastly different than the way that we're used to seeing and integrating with our clinical systems. I think that all of you guys have seen in the past oh my God, we're getting an EMR, all of a sudden a, a committee has to be created to figure out how you're going to map and create the information that is in your clinical system to the chart of account. And then you most likely you're getting a flat file that then gets uploaded into the system in the form of a journal entry. You upload that journal entry and all of a sudden a gazillion exceptions are happening because the mapping is happening within the clinical system and not being owned by the accounting folks. This takes that entire notion and leads with the accounting folks or the function of folks that are responsible for understanding and mapping revenue and put that maintenance in their hands. Not on the EMR folks, not on the guys that are creating and setting up the bill area or setting up the provider. It puts the maintenance in the right group and therefore creating the efficiency, empowering folks, reducing manual processes, and obviously reducing top total cost of ownership, the user experience is gonna be much different because now you don't have to be relying on emails and putting a reminder in your email, by the way, I know this person was out, now remain, let me remind myself three weeks later that they came back and all of a sudden you're still waiting to see what the update is on that. So as you can tell, this is the art of the possible. It goes back to something as basic as data sets, something that we usually don't talk about. And as soon as we get a new software or a new implementation, nobody's talking about identifying master data sets. I would argue that that is the foundation of all of the applications that are being used from a healthcare perspective and above, right? All industries are gonna have their very own unique master data set, centralizing them and basically uh, 
normalizing the data up front rather than um, through a session. It, there's value in that. And it does provide the organization with the ability to have visibility and more importantly, puts you more towards a risk being able to be proactive that rather than responsive in any analysis that you may be doing and more importantly um, being able to look at your overall organizational strategy and be responsive and not being reactive that pretty much concludes the portion of the content that i wanted to cover i didn't know if we had any questions Let me see. Do oh, I have a chat question here? Okay. Let's see here. Trisha, do we have anything in the Q and A? I don't see anything in the Q and A. I don't see anything. But if anyone has any questions, just pop it in the Q and A box. And if you want to give out any of your direct information, if somebody has a question afterwards, they can always email you if, if you wanted to. Oh, okay, here's a question. Um, here's one question. Is EDM used for master data management as well? That is correct. You're absolutely right. That's what we're talking about here, right? Introducing the idea of a master data set and that master data set resides within master data management. Yes. Okay, well, as we wait to see if there are any other questions, let's see if we can get anybody to tell me on the initial trivia question. Anybody want to take a guess? What is the international day that is being celebrated in that movie? First of all, let's see if anybody, um, anybody want to take a guess which movie is being displayed? Okay. I see your Q&A screen. Yep. Okay, hold on. Let me show you then. The, let me take a, Let me take everybody back to that initial. Let's see here. Did I see something come up? Sure, Coco. Okay, very good. That is okay. And if it is Coco, very good, Royce. So Royce, can, you want to you want to go for kill here? What day does it celebrate in the movie? Do you know? So Coco was the first movie that Disney did, and they did an amazing job, I think, about taking Day of the Dead. There you go. So for those of you that may not know, if you Google it today, it's, an, it's the international day that is celebrated, um, and it's called the Day of the Dead. And it's actually very well known in Mexico. They offer up food, and they go and visit the dead. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. You you got it, Royce. You did a wonderful job. Uh, thank you so much for for your response. I um I thought it would be appropriate and uh, very timely. Today is in fact the Day of the Dead. And if you were to live in Mexico or some other countries like in Latin America, Ecuador, and such, you would be visiting your loved ones, uh, specifically in Mexico, they're probably putting up rice in the form of food. Some others uh, put flowers, but if you Google it, you'll see the little drawing and it does say day of the dead. So I thought it was appropriate to sort of have it as a trivia. So thank you, Roy, Roy for participating. Well, thank you everybody for coming and joining and participating. I really appreciate that. I'm going to put up my um, the main slide. And uh, again, if you want to reach out to me, I am more than happy to elaborate a little bit more and talk about um, different use cases here. Um, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this. I've walked in your shoes and absolutely I think that there is so much that we can do and create efficiencies by thinking about all of the different data sets that are in the healthcare industry. So with that, thank you so much. I think we have a few minutes to spend, but thank you very much for attending the session and thank you very much for having me. So checking in to see if we have any additional questions.
We'll wait for a few minutes. You can put questions either in the Q&A or the chat section. I don't see any Q&A at this point, but we will wait for one more minute. Um, feel free to drop off and we will send uh, the recording links so that you can re-review uh, these sessions as well as the remainder of the Solution 21 replays. All right, as a reminder, we do have our third session on February 23rd, collaborating on data using EDM in healthcare to get it right. So please uh, join us for that session as well. I don't see any Q&A, so we will go ahead and uh, end the session. Thank you again. Uh, and, uh, my contact information is here if you'd like to contact me at any time. And we sure, uh, again, appreciate your attendance and look forward to you joining us on February 23rd.